Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Greg Allison with Green Gregs and Galactic Gregs coming to you on the 9th of April, 2021. Time on deck, 21, 1400 hours Central Daylight Time. And this is a joint video because it's technical in nature, nature uh, and it's also of a prepping nature. So it's joint between Green Gregs and Galactic Gregs. It'll be part two, part one of a part two series for Green Gregs because what I'm going to talk about is a new class of weapons of mass destruction. My friends, in the world of weapons of mass destruction, we've long known about nuclear, chemical, and biological. Well, there's a new kid on the block, a new kid on the block that is just now emerging. And this one may be the worst one of all in a sense because of its propensity, its ability to perhaps proliferate. And this is something that uh, may find its way into other nations very readily, other groups, maybe even individuals. So what we're talking about, my friends, is this, the lowly little drone, you know, like the front end of a car. <laughs> the lowly little drone. Yeah, Greg, how this thing, that's the toy. How can this thing be a weapon of mass destruction? My friends, uh, if you have thousands of these, and they're weaponized. Right now, we're experimenting with uh, uh, drone swarms. And it is the drone swarm that would form a weapon of mass destruction. It's having the distributed brain software, cooperative software to allow them to fly in swarms. And you might have even smaller ones that could be very lethal as nanotechnology emerges, especially. So these things uh, you know, could be modified to carry weapons. And we're going to go all into that. Well, I'm going to show you some stuff on that, some things that's going to blow your socks off. Yeah, the, the kid's toy, right? <laughs> or something a YouTuber might use to make a video. And you know what? So here we are, little drones. And it might just fold up here. Guys, this guy folds up into nothing. You know, it's just nothing at all. Yeah, I got to pull up these legs to close the bottom ones. But so there you are, drones. And the part two on the Green Greg's channel will be how to defend yourself should you have to encounter a drone in the future, because it might not just be used as weapons of mass destruction. They can be used in assassinations and hunt down individuals. <clears throat> They've already been done on a large scale by the military going after terrorists. Well, this could proliferate into something that uh, could come after more, far more people than that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I got to tell you, I'm back up here for a minute. You know, <clears throat> some some years ago, back in the early 1990s, I started a program to launch, develop and launch hybrid rockets from altitude balloons. We were developing rockets out of a garage that could hit space. <clears throat> in 1997, on 11 May, we launched one of these rockets right here from a balloon. Hybrid rocket. That is me. That's yours truly right there. And this rocket, White, made it into the millennium edition of the Guinness Book of World Records. I got the year wrong, though. They said 1998. <laughs> hey, it ain't all right. So I guess what? I'm in there with all the freaks with long fingernails. Okay, right? We didn't even submit it. I was surprised when I found out we made the Guinness Book, but we did. When I was doing that project, it dawned on me that, hey, we were doing stuff that took a superpower to do just a few decades earlier. Yeah, we were doing it on a shoestring budget, but a few guys working on the side, we had day jobs, working on the side out of a couple garages. One garage built our avionics, the other garage, we built our rockets. And we had another property we went to to test our rocket motors. We did over 300 rocket motor test funds. We flew dozens of balloons to test our equipment in situ in the atmosphere. Yeah, we had a pretty major program for a small group of people. We made that rocket launch for back then, what was uh, in 1997, about $22,000. Okay, it'd be 44, 45,000 today, maybe. Yeah, this was decades ago, decades ago. This is what I was doing decades ago, but it dawned on me then that if we could do this, what would people be able to do in the future? How will the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction occur? 
because that's what dawned on me. I said, wow, we're doing what it took superpower to do. If, if, and I ran the thought experiment before and in my mind, I said, it's not going to be just a short matter of time and until smaller and smaller groups down to the individual level can have access to weapons of mass destruction technology. And my friends, there it is. And so you're going to say, oh, great, it can't be. Well, buckle up. I'm going to show you all through it here. And uh, then I'm going to show you on another Green Greg's. If you're watching from Galactic Greg, so check out my Green Greg's channel and you'll, you'll see the follow up video, the part two of the series. And it's a prepping topic, so it don't belong on Galactic Greg's. <laughs> but this is a technical topic, but so it does. But I am going to uh, tell everybody that uh, uh, right now uh, there is a special for prepping for those of you that are inclined to prep and I mean, meet some people on the space side. Hey, if you go into space, you got to have long duration food, right? <laughs> It's been great on space mission, right? <laughs> or especially if you're a prepper. I got a special $200 off on prepwithgreg.com where you can get a three month supply of this food that lasts 25 years. Three, $200 off, six buckets of this. Two of these buckets are a month, four week supply. That's 2000 calories a day. You get, you get desserts and drinks, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. To, uh, and the deal like that would absolutely make you a winner. And to top it off, there are nice little packets in here. That's four servings right there. That you can put in your backpack. This you can throw in your trunk, in your car. You can put it on you know, some, some motorcycles. I don't know. <laughs> a little big for a backpack, but hey, you can take those packs out. There you go. My Patriot Supply. Yeah, uh, go to prepwithgreg.com. If you click on the My Patriot Supply logo on prepwithgreg.com, you will find the uh, you will find uh, many other prep supplies if you're into that kind of thing. Okay. So much for that. Glad to great channel. You guys may not be as, as interested in that, but maybe, maybe. Hey, I would advise you right now, time, the time to prep is nigh because our society is going nutsos. Our society is really out the, uh, locally, internally. We have a lot of stress in our society. There's things like a Carrington type event that, that could take out our power grid. I've done two power grid defense conferences. And there's also many other things that could uh, take us out, especially if we get into a war. And these things could actually lead to a bigger war. They could, they could uh, perhaps even uh, be the instigative events to a, a much bigger event, and releasing other weapons of mass destruction. Not to mention, they can be vectors for chemicals. And I don't know, you could even care enough these up. You might uh, have a, like a, basically a little fuel air explosive bomb with them. There's so many things that these drones could do. All right, so let's get into some of these articles. I'm going to show you through some articles real quick. Oh, yeah, if you're not subscribed to my channels, subscribe. Bang the update notification bell and click all. Check out Galactic Gregs and Green Gregs, by the way. <laughs> All righty. Enough said on that. Uh, let's go into these articles real fast. I'm going to show you some stuff here. And then we're going to talk a little bit more after I show you these articles about what this means, where it can go. And the whole idea of uh, this proliferation of weapons of mass destruction technology and what it means for us as a people on earth as a society what we need to do about it i'm going to talk about that that's maybe the most important thing out of what i'm going to talk about here all right so let's get on with this this is the bulletin of, of the atomic scientists here and they have there are several different sources that have concluded that drones could be weapons of mass destruction and so here we have uh october uh 2016 five full years ago guys this is five years ago which is in the world of drone technology that's like the difference between dinosaurs and uh spacex right <laughs> like the difference between a v2 rocket and a falcon uh, heavy <laughs> all right so uh the united states strategic capabilities office launched 103 Perdix drones out of an F-18 Super Hornet. See, these are air launch drones. They've also developed packages to launch these out of the back by the thousands of, of uh, supposedly, of a C-130. They, they, they've been playing around with that. And this article don't mention that. Uh, these drones communicated with uh, one another using a distributed brain, assembling to complex formation, traveling across the battlefield, reforming into a new formation. Basically, they're flying like birds in a flock or, or fish in a swarm. This, the, this swarm over China Lake, California, was the sort of cutting edge innovation that would keep America ahead of its adversaries. You know, that's what they're claiming. 
uh, MIT students were involved. And here it goes on the drone about how great the MIT students are. Uh, and now this isn't really a article for drone, any weapons of mass destruction. You gotta remember, this is coming from the Bolton of Atomic Scientists. Uh, creating a drone swarm is fundamentally a programming problem. Yeah, it's not a problem of these little bitty, you know, these innocent little seeming drones by themselves. Uh, it's hard to imagine them as being threatening, but if you have large swarms of them, uh, it could be. And again, software. Software is a big thing. We have software uh, people who can do software anywhere in the world. Uh, they're from all kinds of countries. Third world countries have some of these smartest programmers. Don't discount them. And here it talks about uh, the Islamic Republic of Iraq and, and Syria building drones from duct tape and plywood. Hey, guys, you see that? So the, the, the drone sword challenge is just getting individual units to work together. So this, this is cool. This is what you need to, you know, you don't have to have sophisticated systems necessarily to build these. This is what I was telling you. The Syrians and Iraqis were building them. And with 3D printers uh, going around today, you'd be surprised what we're going to be able to come up with. And with the sensors and things that are being distributed. Um, battle, uh, I am not want to read into that. So um, it's not my purpose of reading this article. I'm trying to, to get to you the, the key elements here. Armed, fully autonomous swarms are future weapons of mass destruction. While they're unlikely to achieve the scale of harm of the Sarbama, 100 megaton nuclear device, the largest bomb ever developed by the uh, Soviet Union, uh, swarms could uh, cause the same level of destruction, death, and injury as the nuclear weapons used in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Yeah, so you're talking over 100,000 casualties. And here it says tens of thousands. Uh, uh, people that no longer existed. Uh, this has caused the drone swarms combine two properties unique of, of traditional weapons and uh, of mass destruction, mass harm, and a lack of control to, assume the, to ensure the weapons do not harm civilians. Well, that amount of control will depend on the software and how good it is, and how good the sensors are, and a lot of other things. But um, So they had 75 drones to, to swarm a thousand units in the, during the India's Army Day parade. Uh, so, you know, there, there's some of the stuff I'm not going to go on this. Georgia Tech's involved in this. Uh, but here's what you got to look at. Drone swarms worsen the risk posed by lethal autonomous weapons. Even if a risk were well designed, tested, and validated, a drone a, 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 autonomous weapon hitting an incorrect target or just 0.1% would still be high and a substantial risk when it's multiplied across thousands of drones. So what they're saying is you got a good chance of hitting incorrect targets, even when they are fairly, you know, pretty good. Uh, then I'm talking about collecting mistakes in drone communications. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna go through this whole article. Uh, extremely useful in carrying out mass casualty attacks. Useful in strategic, uh, yeah, talking about strategic deterrence, highly effective delivery systems for chemical and biological weapons. Mm. Uh, so it's in the integrated environmental sensors, the mixed arms tactics, tactics, you know, would, would play in here. I'm not going to read everything in there because I'm going to hit some other articles and spend more time on this one than I should have. This is showing a simulation of this deployment over China Lake, but it's only 100 and three drones in that case. Well, look, we're now up to drone swarms of like over 3,000. In some of the cases where they're talking about them as weapons of mass destruction, they're talking about having drone swarms of 30 to 40,000 drones. Yeah, now you're talking some huge numbers. China conducts test of massive suicide drone swarm watch from a box on a truck. And these are fair sized drones here too. Uh, China recently conducted a test involving uh, Swarms of lottery munitions are referred to as suicide drones. Okay, guys, so, so uh, they had like uh, 200 fixed wing drones you know, coming out of one of these trucks. Well, I don't see 200 cubes, so what did they do? More than one truck, they have more than one drone in a tube. So these guys are popping out and wings are, are deploying. It's got a camera here in the front, although this is a, this is a mock-up. This is not the actual thing. There's an actual deployment picture. So here these guys are actually getting deployed. And well, locusts, uh-oh, locusts. You know what? Sounds like revelations, right? <laughs> I 
uh, you remember in Revelations, the locust that was released from the bottomless pit by the angel abandoned, uh, I didn't say it right, Apollyon. Uh, Apollyon. Hmm. I want to skip through this. Low cost UAV swarm technology. Well, we're talking about Chinese system. Locusts sound like an American. Blow this up. Well, they're not watching them all at once. It's not like a, there we go. She comes out, deploys the wings and goes on the flight. Wow, and there's a Sabbath that held it in there. Okay, guys. Interesting, interesting. Let's get forward and see what we see. Oh, there's a bunch of them in flight. <laughs> Excuse me. So there's now, you can see there's several little ones here. It's hard to see maybe in this video. Maybe we can see them move around. It's not a tight swarm formation, but it's a swarm nonetheless. There are other formations of tight swarms. I'm gonna show you in a little bit. It just gives you the idea right there that uh, these things are being developed, deployed, helicopters here's from the ground and these are uh, skip forward all right i'm not gonna play the video per se to get the idea get the idea here we go we're going to get more interesting here army's new drone drone system may be weapons of mass destruction analyst zach kellenborn now he's with the uh, air force uh, uh center for strategic deterrence studies out of maxwell air force base in alabama and he's probably done more to, to to mention and put light on this concept than anything amazing some of the advanced stuff that comes out of alabama <laughs> all right so weapons of mass destruction is the term used in arms control circles, signifying something capable of damage on large scale to subject and subject to international treaties. But good luck regulating this. So uh, let's go down here. Zachary Kellenborn is a senior consultant at the ABS group specializing in unmanned uh, systems swarms, weapons of mass destruction, terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, warfare. Author the report for the U.S. Air Force Center for Strategic Deterrent Studies at University Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama, as I mentioned before. So, drone swarms can be used in the traditional weapons of mass destruction roles, according to him. They would be highly effective as mass casualty weapons, especially against soft targets, writes Kane Warren. Uh, Drum swarms could be effective in assassination attempts due to the ability to overwhelm defenses. Uh, can be used as uh, access to area area denial weapons. And oh, I thought there was more here on this article. Well, the top, he is quoted in other articles and other places being. So guys, look at this. Here is your maximum swarm right there. This is it right here. 3,281 drones creating the uh, Genesis emblem uh, over uh, Shanghai skyline. And they're all lit up. Well, that's real pretty. That's it, guys, for them to fly in a formation like that, 3,281 swarms. That's a tight formation. They all flew in it in a well-executed uh, swarm. They had the logo and the word Genesis above that. So you can see the city, uh, uh, you can see the city of Shanghai in the background. That is a large ginormous swarm. That itself could do a lot of damage. And this is still in its infancy, my friend, still in its infancy. So it could be, uh, oh yeah, so talking about the, there was a, yeah, right there. This is still in its infancy. So we're not gonna go into this. That was the current record breaker. 
uh, as of uh, 6 April 2021 when this article was posted. So this is new. This is brand new, guys. This is brand new stuff. Ah, so here is an article claiming that uh, China is winning the drone race. I mean, they're killer land drones. So they got some land drone too. There's too many ads in this article. So I'm not going to go into this article in great detail. Too much silliness in here with all these ads. It is Natural Interest Magazine. So, you know, hey, they have some interesting articles, but they're sometimes a little off <laughs> and too cartoony. In fact, I think the guy that started that was a cartoon cartoonist. Now, this article is more interesting. I'm going to show you some video from this article. Should killer drones be considered weapons of mass destruction? This is out of popular mechanics, which is, you know, kind of a pop brag for, for science science interesting people now the time west points modern warfare institute block has uh, concluded this that they are weapons of mass destruction uh, and they belong with nuclear chemical and biological weapons so there's multiple sources coming out saying this and again they're talking about our good friend zach or zachary kalenborn and he did an article in 2007 uh, with this video called slaughter bots and i imagine a lot of you have seen this because this has been uh, it's kind of a ted talk style defense contractor fi fixed on news report, you know, talking about swarms. So he used this to take it to the UN to uh, get people uh, aware of what killer drones might do. Caleb Bourne uh, also inserts that drones may not, may not ever be able to discriminate between combatants and non-combatants, resulting in soldiers, wounded soldiers who are no longer combatants or, and civilians being killed a lot with impunity. You know, normally you don't attack a, a wounded soldier, because they're not combated anymore. Uh, how, how do you prevent uh, slaughter bots from coming to reality? We treat them as weapons of mass destruction. So they're trying to get this into the UN, to get in the countries to regulate it. Well, good luck with that, because this is one of these things. This is a technology that, unlike you know nuclear technology that requires uh, massive amounts of plutonium and enrichment, no, this is something that gangs could put together. Criminal organizations could, could organize this stuff. Small countries could do this. Anybody with a good set of software programmers could come up with this stuff. And the software, once it gets started and developed, it's going to get around. So let's look at a little bit of this uh, killer bot video here. We're going to skip through it and select pieces and all. Uh, you know, so this is fair use. I'm just going to talk through it and uh, you know give my creative talk over the top of it and take snippets. Yes, he's got a drone flying around him. Well, he did say something that going to catch him. Oh, I missed it. To separate the bad guys from the good. Separate bad guys from good. We have something much bigger. 100 times faster than a human. Yeah, what about that? Well, that, that's a little bit more advanced than this little drawing I got in my hand, but this is within the realm of possibility in a few years. The stochastic recognition pattern that recognized him and went straight to him because uh, it was looking for this face. I think somebody in the audience wouldn't have it, right? Because this is not a real talk, okay? It's a TED Talk style talk, but not a real one. Did you see that? Did you see that? He's all happy. <laughs> it's enough to penetrate the skull and destroy the contents. Shape charge, shape charge is what he's talking about. It's a small little shape charge. Is enough. I still didn't catch it, we back up a little bit more. They used to say guns don't kill people, people do. Well, people don't. They get emotional, disobey orders, aim high. Let's watch the weapons make the decisions. Uh, so take people out of the decision room. So if you really want to take some folks out and you're a commander, you're the head of an organization, you send people out to do it. It's often been known in combat that the soldiers really wouldn't fire their weapons or wouldn't fire them at other people because they just didn't have the heart to do it. But a machine, they don't have a heart. They don't care. So it's more dangerous in that regard. These were all bad guys. This is fictional. So let's go. Hang on. Let's skip forward. Oh, here we are. Here's an aircraft. A $25 million order now buys this. Enough to kill half a city. The bad half. The bad half. 
According to who? According to who? Actually, risk free. Just risk characterize free. him, release the swarm, and rest easy. Wow. See what we're talking about here? We're talking, we're really talking weapons of mass destruction here, guys. Uh oh. They're describing as some kind of automated attack which killed 11 U.S. senators at the Capitol building. Okay. This is fictional, guys. This is fictional. This is not real. This is not real news. This is all fictional. And I'm just going to step through here. And now they're showing them, you know, these attacks could be used in all kinds of ways and against all kinds of people. They could be perpetrated by groups like this group here, maybe, or the major groups the target. Oh, wow. Oh, well, in this case, these guys are the target. Come on, Oliver, put her on. Oh, no, it's uh, it's, it's not it's good like that. Really? Oh, well, listen, I see some photos here with some money, and I can see lots of blood. Yeah. So these guys get attacked in this. So. Relaxing firearm legislation. I can just imagine the events of January the 6th and the kind of people that, you know. So here's a terrorist group unleashing drones, or maybe uh, maybe they're not a terrorist group. Maybe they are some agency releasing them out of the back of a truck. And where they go? They're going into a school, basically, into a university. And they're going after people. And again, this is fiction. You see this? 8,300 students, according to this, 12 universities hit. So, you know. If you got a group that's against certain kind of people, so yeah, this show just going in to the, through the school, going through the windows and, and chasing people down in the classrooms. It's a little bit more than I want to show here in this video and my channels because this is on the verge. This is on YouTube. This is on the verge of stuff that uh, fits in our community standards. So I'm not going to go into that. And you know, but say it, air drones aren't the only thing in the drone world. Here is uh, a U.S. Army. Uh, tank drone, <laughs> probably a lot cheaper than M1. Although it's got a back door in it, so it looks like it's manable to some degree, but you can make them smaller. I mean, you know, what if you just took a platform of a truck basically, and you know, like uh, uh, back in some of the African wars where they were, an anti-tank weapon was a old Toyota truck loaded with explosives and sent <laughs> after a tank. <laughs> ah, but there are shortfalls of the drones. The drones do, can't do everything. This is, could be a uh, hope for those that want to defend themselves. Boston Dynamics spot robot was thrown to the Army field test, but it ran out of battery in mid in mid combat. <laughs> so there are limitations. There are limitations. And my friends, that's part of what we're going to talk about in their defense. Here is a science direct. Here's a scientific paper talking about the game of drones, <laughs> weapons makers of war. So this goes on and on and gets into it. So. <clears throat> I'm stop the share. Let's stop. Hey, Halo. It's Halo. How altitude lift off. How altitude lift off. That was the program I started back in 1994. I watched hybrid rockets and altitude lifters. Halo. High altitude lift off. We did quite a few launches. We spun off a company called Heart. We did a lot of stuff. Not really. We did a lot of stuff. We did several missions out of two garages from the nonprofit. Uh, activities of, of uh, Halo to uh, Park. So we even spun off a company. We had all kind of things that we were doing. So these little innocent sounding drones that we play with on a regular basis could become very formal devices in the hands of the wicked or otherwise. These little things and much smaller. Think about nanotechnology. It might not be that they're putting a shape charge in your head. It might be that they make these things the size of a net and they swarm you with them. And uh, they get onto your, your face mask, they get onto your gas mask and eat their way through the filter and then go up your nose and eat your brains. Just saying, how do you defend yourself from that? I had a friend, uh, <laughs> Travis Taylor, some of you know him, he did Rocket City Rednecks. He came out speaking about the L5 group, some sort of L5 society, a space society. And he was talking about, um, he was talking about how to defend yourself from space alien attack. <laughs> you know, bang, 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 bang. And uh, really Travis, come on. 
a technology that you know a civil society if they were to come here that advanced shoot they would just uh come up with a drone swarm uh, of little gnats and they'd go up your nose and eat your brains and you couldn't you couldn't go bang bang against them <laughs> you did not have a good combat for that so <clears throat> that is really that's it these things could proliferate they could go into the hands of organized crime of small nations of terrorist groups even maybe individuals that happen to have enough money to hire a few programmers is that these things you know and there are some rich individuals who don't like a lot of people a lot of our rich people are obsessed to tell us we have too many people so a lot of people don't like people over here or people over here they don't like people in this group or people in that group there's a lot of division in this country we have a lot of people that just don't like other folks for many many reasons and Therein lies the problem. Therein lies a lot of the risk is that we have too much hatred in our world today, that people are out to uh, try to take each other. We've had in our society today, we've never been more divided. And that division may be part of our undoing, especially with this technology proliferation that we're talking about. Some of you may remember the 1954, I believe it was movie, The Forbidden Planet. In that movie, a civilization, uh, you know, they, they went to this planet and then what they discovered, you know, the top, top, top of it looked like Mars that was barren. But if you went under the surface, the whole planet was totally built in by some super advanced civilization that created incredible technology. But they wiped themselves out overnight. And they did it, you know, through their technology. Uh, as they, you know, they, they created the technology where their minds could create anything they wanted and desired. Uh, but when they went to sleep, the monsters of the id took over and they, the, the, in their nightmares, they started wiping each other out. And, and as soon as half the planet went to sleep, you know, they, they obliterated themselves <laughs> instantly. And the first night they turned the technology on that was supposed to give them the greatest good, they wiped themselves out with it. So <laughs> be careful what you ask for, you might get it right. <laughs> so, but it doesn't take that kind of technology to reach levels like it, not even close to it. Drones may be the way toward it because drones can proliferate. That's what I was saying. When I, back in the days when I was in the garage, I was thinking, yeah, something's going to happen. The first thing that occurred to me was the, the uh, uh, bi uh, biological technology, since uh, we can in lab, they have, we have bio labs all over the world. I mean, even poor countries, <laughs> totally undeveloped third world countries have some very sophisticated bio labs, and genetic engineering is proliferating. I mean, it was, you know, a couple of decades ago, people were ordering genomes off the internet and ordering constituent parts to build viral uh, systems and things like that. So, um, yes, the, the technology is proliferating that people could do great harm with. And so it's biological, but drones offer the, offer the way to deliver the biologicals. They offer the ways to deliver the chemicals. They offer ways to even, just, and if you get enough of them together, and if they had a little fuel tank, some spew fuel in there, they could create a fuel air explosion. So they could do a lot of harm in many, many different ways. Like somebody just flop your nose and eat your gray goo. Gray goo. Yeah, nanotechnology. <laughs> what is it? We say if the nanotechnology goes amok, that they might just start eating everything and then summon the whole world into more nanobots. And the whole world ends as a big pile of nanobots. And, you know, they call it gray goo. That's the, the gray goo apocalypse. And, you know, I kind of got onto my, <laughs> uh, I got a friend, uh, Eric Drexler, who wrote the book, Engines of a Creation. And he's talking about nanotechnology. And I said, Eric, you know, you, you've unleashed uh, apocalypse on us. This whole gray goo apocalypse may be because of what you wrote here. And he said, yeah, I know, but he said, technology is, it's one of those things that's going to happen. It's going to come out sooner or later, anyway, whether I wrote about it or not. You know, and he's right. So that's the thing. And this, this is my message here. This is the ultimate message. Technology will proliferate. Weapons of mass destruction technology will proliferate. I mean, some of it you can control. We've been lucky that the earlier versions were things like biologicals and biological technology used to be hard to develop. Chemical technology uh, for chemical warfare. Well, it takes a whole lot of that stuff to be a true weapon of mass destruction. It has to have delivery systems. Uh, so it's you know not something that would everybody's going to be running around with the drone. Uh, nuclear requires uh, 
rare metals like plutonium, which you have to uh, basically uh, construct. And, and, and then there's the uranium, which you have to enrich and enrich and enrich. And then you go through any reactors and produce uh, plutonium. Just not anybody can do that. And so it's easier, far easier to control that because the enrichment facilities are very expensive for making highly enriched uranium. You know, the, the Iraqis, excuse me, the Iranians have been working on that for some time. And of course, we have uh, you know, created stuck nets of viruses and various things to attack that and slow them down, but they're still progressing. So uh, the Manhattan Project, the, the, uh, uh, if you go to Tennessee, uh, what was the, the city up there? I know the name of it, I'm getting brain locked right now. <laughs> the secret city in Tennessee that, that, that had all the, the, the enrichment centrifuges for making the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, Fat Man and Little Boy. Uh, <clears throat> These were uh, Oak Ridge, yes, Oak Ridge. These were uh, massive, massive efforts to do. But now we're talking about just software, duct tape and plywood or balsa wood, software, software. You realize there's kids that know how to program all over the world in your poorest country. I mean, you're getting hacked like crazy from Nigeria, right? <laughs> you can't underestimate anyone as uh, George W. used to say, w. never misunderestimate your enemy. <laughs> Double negative, that means positive, right? So yeah, he knew better than that. He talked like that just to ham it up, I'm sure. <laughs> he realized he actually had a higher GPA than John Kerry. Everybody thought was the intellectual of the two. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm no fan of George Bush, don't get me wrong. <laughs> He's very much, uh, in, a, in a realm of, uh, of players that I'm not actually fond of. But what I am fond of is people figuring out ways to get through things and get around things. And what's the real answer to this is we have to find ways expression that people are comfortable and happy that's a better way to put it people are comfortable and happy it might be hard to get them to go after each other even on a religious basis it's, we have to me you know why do we want to wipe each other out on the basis of the greater creator would he really approve of that well some people think so well you don't you know hey if you don't wear your hat like this then you're going to die and go to hell you know <laughs> and, and we got to attack you yeah, see what I'm saying? That's, that's you know, that's, you know, I'm, I'm illustrating absurdity with absurdity. You know, this whole idea that we ought to be going after each other because you don't believe it exactly like this or exactly like that. Really? Is that a reason to, to wipe other people out? How about if your idea is so good, how about selling the other person on it? How about talking them into it? Let all these ideas proliferate in the marketplace of ideas from debate and open discussion. And then let's see what lasts, what floats. And if they don't buy into your whatever you think, then they got to answer to the greater creator in the end. And if you're wrong, then they're okay. And if you're right, then they're not okay. Okay. Let the greater creator be the judge. Why are you the judge and jury? Oh, my greater creator tells me I got to be. All right. We got something to work on. <laughs> I'm not here to solve all the religious problems of the world because of these channels that I uh, have are not religious channels. But that may be the last remaining thing. But this whole idea of fighting over territory, materials, and resources, we can get over that. And we can definitely get over it. And also, we can be able to one day tap resources in space if these uh, starships ever get where they can land and work, which I hope they will. 
<laughs> I trust Elon will keep at it long enough to make it work as long as they don't do something catastrophic to uh, civilian neighborhoods with them. So uh, I have a lot of hope for that. But some of you don't think in space. <laughs> Well, that's a whole nother matter. If you don't, just tune that part of this discussion out because the drones are real, okay? I'm bringing you a lot of real content. Don't, just cause you don't buy the part of what I say, don't mean you shouldn't listen to the rest of it. Because I've done a video where I talk about wearing other people's rose colored glasses on my Green Greg's channel. And what that's all about is the idea that everybody in the world has their own worldview. And once you've established a worldview, you take in, you have an information bias. You take in information, additional information, in such a way that it tends to confirm the worldview that you already hold. That's the way you start interpreting everything. A lot of people have aha, oh, they'll realize something, or they'll have an epiphany, they think, oh, this is it. And then they interpret everything in the world according to whatever that epiphany aha moment is. <laughs> so some people have very interesting worldviews, and it has, may or may not have anything to do with religion, it may be some technical point or some other thing. But we all have our worldviews. It may be worldviews due to things that we identify with. It may be our race. It may be where we're from. It may be our village. It may be our town. And everybody likes to promote their town, their local whatever. And that's why football, you know, is so big or other sports and people identify with their local sports teams. And, you know, that's okay. It's fun and innocent. But the whole idea here is I promote the idea of people trying to understand other people put on their rose-colored glasses, try to appreciate where they're coming from, what they see, uh, and that will help you to work with them and to talk with them and just try to put yourself in their shoes. Where are they coming from? I mean, you may violently disagree with them, but if you put yourself in their shoes, you might start to appreciate at least where they come from. It don't mean you've got to agree with it, but it gives you a, a chance to appreciate them at least, to understand where they're coming from, and, and it gives you a better nego negotiating basis to talk with them. Because, you know, if you're way over here, you're way over here and you're shouting from these different angles and these other people over there, their worldviews are so set apart that they're never going to come together shouting at each other for, from across this great chasm in the middle. You got to at least try to understand each other, not agree, but understand each other. And in the end, it may be okay if you're still on different polarities, if just you're not banging together. You know what I mean? It's okay to be different. <laughs> just don't tell me what I got to give up. <laughs> That's my opinion. A lot of people, that's where they're at. So I'm all about freedom. I'm very much all about freedom. So much so that I've you know, created the Freedom Restoration Foundation. Go to freedomrestorationfoundation.org. Uh, we are a national organization promoting the restoration of our freedoms. So all that said, guys, there are many things to take into account here. The, the, the drone technology is real. It's getting more, uh, it's getting stronger. It could proliferate. It's becoming more powerful. They'll be able to scale it down to smaller and smaller flight platforms. We do know there are dry, drones the size of dragonflies. Well, they'll get smaller. There'll be drones the size of flies and gnats. And when you're swarming all this, uh, it could be very formidable what they might do with it. And who is they in this case? It could be anybody who's got the resources to deploy a platform, a, a, a swarm of drones, and an agenda. And there's a lot of agendas out there. So we've got to find ways to get along. We've got to find ways to come to peace. We've got to find ways to come to terms with each other in the world we live in. If we do that, we might have a hope. Maybe. But without that, at some point in the future, we'll be like the krill. We may cease to exist if we let our hatreds get us uh, the the monsters in our id or subconscious you know that was you know a thing of freud talking about our subconscious monsters the id so that is something we've got to work on we really 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 need to work on coming together right now in our world like i said uh, domestically here in the united states we've got people on the left and the right that are going after each other really hard we've got uh us versus china China versus the Philippines versus Japan versus Taiwan, Russia versus the Ukraine. Uh, we got Israel versus Iran. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Israel just uh, did some attacks into Syria against Iranian forces there. Those countries may go at it. Nuclear war may come sooner than later. In fact, that may come before these things ever come to fruition. We have a very trying world today. That's why my Green Greg's channel has turned a lot more to prepping uh, orientation 
from the original intent of being an urban gardening uh, channel because we, we face a lot of stuff in this world today and we need to know how to deal with it, prepare for it. My Galactic Grace channel is about space mostly, but you know, space science technology, uh, drones are aerospace technology. And uh, the, the fact that we need to recognize that these things uh, can proliferate and we need to do whatever we can about that to prevent it or at least prevent people from having hatreds to use them against each other. That's universal and it fits whether you're into aerospace or you're into uh, prepping or gardening. We all need to go out and do something positive in the world, be the change we want to see. What I say on my channel is this, is light display, is what I say on Green Ridge channel typically, light dispels darkness and love dispels hate. So I tell everybody go out and be, be a love light, shine your love light to the world. There's a solution. Yeah, you know, we can still work with the regulations and try to do this thing from the regulatory standpoint, weapons of mass destruction type things, the UN and blah, 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 blah. I'm not a big fan of the UN, by the way, but uh, there are things like that that can be done, but I don't see them working in this case because this thing, this technology can proliferate. I mean, gosh, anybody can build these drones. I mean, uh, and, and you can have mass production of them by the thousands. And so maybe you buy an order of these, you might have a pseudo somebody buy them for you. And then you might modify them. You have 3D printers out there. What people do? <laughs> Excuse me. So I see that, that even the software will become more available. Just like software downloads for 3D printers. I mean, uh, the software that you can piece together to make this stuff work, like the software out in the hacking community and the, and the dark web and things like that. You know, so this I, I just sit proliferating. I sit proliferating massively over the decades ahead. And that and bioweapon technology, the proliferation of these two things, that's why we have to try to get along. Now, I am on my Green Grave channel going to do a follow up talking about defending yourselves from drones. Yeah, it ain't pretty, but there's things you can do. So uh, you may want to subscribe to my Green Grave channel if you're not on it <laughs> to, to uh, wait for that video. And so, with all that said, I'm going to say, be safe, and very much I thank you for watching.